fiery win for Ferrari. Schumacher delivers under pressure. Hamilton keeps podium run going. Welcome to the Late Night Race Review. Welcome back to the Late Night Race Review for what was a fairly interesting Austrian Grand Prix. I'm Dave Jericho and joining me as always is Owen Scott and Isidro Gonzalez. Um, pretty good race this week, guys. Uh, we've been spoiled. We had a good Silverstone and now we've had a good Austria uh, GP as well. Uh, what did we make of it? Yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, but after last week, I mean, it's, it's hard to top what happened at Silverstone, but we were you know, spoiled. This, this, yeah, yeah, I was expecting fireworks. We got some fireworks in the end, but um, yeah, good, good, solid race, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it was a very good race. Uh, maybe not as good as for Ferrari and Red Bull, but I have to say that team has they they did well again, second week in a row. Well, let's uh, let's start with the, the the sprint race, I suppose. I mean, it was our, our second sprint race of the season. Um, love it or hate it. I think it was, uh, it, it throws up some nice surprises from time to time. Um, this week we had Max Verstappen took a fairly comfortable win um, on Saturday. Um, but do we think he got that win because Ferrari maybe were stepping over themselves? Um, Carlos and Leclerc were kind of too busy battling, gave uh, Max the chance to kind of storm off into the, into the sunset. Um, what do you think, Scotty? Do you think uh, Ferrari maybe should have called a bit of team orders there and said, like, right, guys, work together as a team here um, and not fight each other? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, after last week and Sainz taking the victory, I think they were still they were a little bit confused as to wh what way to, to play Saturday. But it did, it, yeah, as you say, it allowed Max to, to just, he was unstoppable on, on Saturday. There was no catching him at all. Um, so, yeah, no, they, they should have stepped in and... and had a word with the with the lads. Yeah, yeah. And from one Red Bull driver then to we had Perez then um obviously got the penalty due to I think it was the Q2 track limits ex uh, exceeding the track limits in Q2 on Friday. Um and unfortunately they didn't cop it in time so they've, you know, they sort of gave him a penalty then uh, for for the start of the sprint race. Um but he went from P13 from from the start of the sprint race to P4. Um, what do we make of his recovery drive on on Saturday, Isidro? Yeah, it was it was expected. Perez is very good doing that, starting in the, the last row or very far away, and just find his way to the to the top positions. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, and it was good. I mean, it was good drives all around. I mean, it was like I said, it's uh, the sprint race is usually good just for a few little. I mean, th there, there's not a. We're not going to be sitting here with our jaws on the ground in amazement, but there's always some good battles that happen during a sprint race. Um, and one other one there I just want to touch on before we start looking at the main race was sort of what was going on with um, Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen. Um, and of course, obviously, Lewis Hamilton there was in the in the mix as well. But obviously, Kevin Magnussen was ahead of Mick. Um, Mick was obviously the faster car. Uh, and it was clear when we started seeing them come approaching turn three on a number of occasions, Mick was backing out of the overtake. He obviously had the, 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 the pace to, to overtake and he wasn't. Um, but what was happening then, so obviously there was a team order going on here. Um, and what happened there then was obviously Lewis was then gaining on them. And Mick then had the, the sort of the, the, the double issue of now he had to defend from Lewis whilst also keeping DRS to you know the within DRS for K Mag in front. Um so do we think like the the has did has miss a step here? Like was there an option to maybe switch these guys around a little sooner? Um or and I'm thinking maybe more so that Mick had the pace to catch Ocon as opposed to just Mick finishing ahead of uh Kevin Magnuson. So uh, what do you think Scotty did 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 they miss a step on this one? Yeah I mean like I don't blame them. They're not used to being this far up the grid, in fairness. Um, <laughs> True. They, they don't have experience of their two drivers having to deal with this sort of situation. But it had airs of um, Ocon and Alonso in Abu Dhabi. No, not Abu Dhabi. What was it? Uh, Baku. Sorry. Mm. Um, where you know, 
they, they just needed one of the cars. Like K Mag, I think he kind of hung him out to dry a little bit, to be honest. Absolutely. That's, that was what um, I was going to say next. So, yeah, yeah, go on. He, yeah, the, the, he should have. And Mick was shouting over the radio to, to just back off a little bit, give me the DRS. Um, yeah. And yeah, no, I think they, they should have handled that a lot better. Because it wasn't a case that K Mag had the pace, it was more that. Mick couldn't focus on attacking K Mag because he had to keep Lewis behind. So that was the reason Magnuson was able to get, you know, start pulling away. And all it did was, yeah, left his teammate a sitting duck, which, yeah, uh, but I think we're, well, I know me and Isidro are team, team Mick this weekend. And uh, <laughs> so I'm jumping I, was, on. I'm jumping I on. was raging. I was raging. Um, but yeah, look, sprint race was good. But let's get on to the, to the main event. Um, and as always, look, we'll start with the, the race winner, Charles Leclerc. Um, first time as well that we've seen a Ferrari on the top spot of the podium since 2003. Needless to say, who that was, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Schumacher. Um, so like he had the pace over the Red Bulls clearly today. Um, I mean, he overtook Max on the on on track three times. Um, looking like obviously Mick or sorry, uh, Max Verstappen obviously had tire degradation uh, as well. Um, but I mean, how good was that drive from Charles, and and how important is this now for the for the drivers' title race, as you draw? It was a good drive from uh, Leclerc, no doubt, considering all the all the problems, and uh, even Max Verstappen, he did his best to to fight, but I think Ferrari was much better overall. But Ferrari. Within the team itself, they definitely need to step up their game because they they can't have both drivers finishing a race for the for the last couple. I mean, last weekend it was one or the other, and this weekend was only one. So they need to step up their game on the on the pit, mm -hmm. and the same for the Red Bull. There's a little issue there, definitely. There was problem last week and this weekend. It was not the car, but uh, the overall mechanic, the tires. It's they need to sort things yeah. out. and and that is it on um, with uh, Ferrari especially. I mean that issue that that you were saying about Leclerc having problems. I mean he was looking comfortable. I mean he did have the pace over the Red Bulls, um, but then he obviously had that throttle issue where the the pedal was sticking, um, and to be able to manage. Um, and and retain and, and maintain that two second gap to Max, who was catching him, um, towards the end, the last couple of laps. But Charles is having to put it, hook his foot under the pedal effectively to pull the pedal back to the zero position. I mean, it's not often we hear drivers having to drive, you know, you know, work mechanically within the car to 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 um to get it over the line you know because of these these cars and and i know it's it's not it's um it's um it's not a cable uh, accelerator you know so it's still but it's still nice to see drivers having to put in that effort yeah i mean charles is absolutely world class and i think that's the thing that sets him and science aside we see slight driver error from signs from time to time maybe a little bit of naivety he throws himself into certain positions whereas charles the thing that seems to to stop charles so far this season is ferrari or the car and um, it's it's not really driver error um so I, I charles i think if they can if ferrari can get that pit wall sorted um and they can nail charles as like this guy is number one science is number two and i think we're going to maybe start seeing that a little bit more now with the engine penalties that are coming up for for carlos there'll be a little, little bit more of a gap between the two of them in terms of points um i think that's the way ferrari should go because charles i mean he, he as, as i said already he's absolutely world class and i think he could challenge verstappen if ferrari could get their get the the pit wall sorted and and as well as that, I mean, if there was any sort of truth in the reports coming out over the last sort of week since since Silverstone, where we saw um, Bonato doing the old finger wag to uh, Leclerc after the race, um, you know, there was a lot of reports coming out that there was a bit of tension in the camp and a bit of tension between Leclerc and and maybe his side of the garage. Um, but I mean, this might be if if that is the, if there's any thread of truth to that, um, this might be a bit of the the reset that they needed to. Uh, you know, everyone's friends again. Um, 
but it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be a race weekend without uh, for, well it wouldn't be a race weekend for Ferrari without us being able to talk about some shortcomings <laughs> um, and unfortunately the, the the sticky accelerator or throttle pedal in Leclerc's car was not the the end of it and um, we had what can only be described as an explosion under the engine cover of Carlos Sainz's car yeah. um, and I mean that was a fairly fiery end to, to for, for Sainz I mean when we saw the replay, now, we've seen engines go before in, in Formula One. It's not, not uncommon. It's not uncommon also to see uh, engine fires. But what is a little bit more uncommon is when you saw the replay and you see the, the bulging and sort of, so obviously an explosion happens underneath that engine cover and you see uh, sort of parts of the engine cover sort of break away and, and bulge out and crack. Um, so, I mean, it's poor, it, it, you know, not signs as fault. Um, you know, it was a great drive. I mean, there was a possible P2, and you could hear the disappointment in his voice when when the engine let go. Um, but un- unfortunately, ended up with zero points. Um, but what will this mean now for signs? Um, and what will it do for his mentality now going into France? Um, are we going to go back to what we were talking about at the start of the season, where? You know, he, he's going to be desperate to try and recover. He doesn't want to fall into the number two position. I mean, I think he maybe thought he was going to be able to challenge for the title as well at one point. Um, so, Zidra, what, what do you think this is going to do for his mentality going into France and, and you know, and, and how he went out today? I think France will see uh, Ferrari saying that Charles will be their man and Sainz will need to to help Clark in that uh, for that position yeah uh, it's uh, and assuming that they fix their own issues from a mechanical perspective I mean as you're saying what happened today it's very rare to see especially in the Ferrari nowadays yeah so what happened there it could be a lot worse than it was today mm. so they definitely need to take a look and see what's happening there and on that, when you were saying about, you know, when we're talking about sort of the Ferrari making the call on the number one, number two, both of you kind of mentioned it. Um, like up until now, Ferrari has sort of played the team game. There was no favorites, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, possibly maybe they should have made a decision sooner. Um, but in, now, now sort of going into uh, France and, and, and the remaining races of the, or, or should I say the second half of the season, um, would we see? I mean, it's clear that they're obviously going to have to favor um, Leclerc, especially in France, given that Sainz is going to be taking engine penalties and he's going to be further back. So, will Sainz be willing to play the team game? Will he be willing now, at this stage of the season, to kind of say, okay, my role now is to make sure that A, I help the team win the constructors, and B, I help my teammate win the driver's title? What do you think, Scotty? I mean, he's going to have to. Um, but I don't think he's going to be happy about it. Mm. Um, I think Sainz sees himself as, as the, like rightly so, that's the mentality of a world-class racing driver. You have to think of yourself as number one, um, but he's definitely not going to be happy about it. I think there'll be more tension as, as the year goes on um, with Sainz. Like Mercedes seem to have a good balance there between Hamilton and Russell, um, and same with, with Red Bull. I think at times there, there's obviously been flare-ups between Perez and Verstappen, but... I, I just don't think Carlos has that mentality to be um, the number two driver. I don't think it's in him. He may not think it's in him. <laughs> but it's, he may be it's forced in into that position, though, however. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, yeah well, uh, let's, uh, I suppose, moving on. that. So so that was a, a P2 position missed for Ferrari and Sainz. Um, but to the, um, so the delight, I suppose, of Red Bull and Max Verstappen, who was only fallen back away from the Ferraris. But, I mean, what do we think of Max Verstappen's drive this, you know, today, especially? I mean, we, we already looked at the sprint race, but today, especially. Um, and maybe like what was going on um, in terms of his pace? I mean, it looked from qualifying that they were up there with the Ferraris. Then when we started seeing race pace, um, you know, in the sprint, we didn't see whether there was degradation because we didn't see the Ferraris put pressure on them uh, over the 20, whatever it was, 20 odd laps, 25 laps or whatever it was in the sprint race. So 
what was this something that maybe was there on the sprint race, um, but we didn't see it because the Ferraris didn't put pressure on them, or is this something that has happened since the sprint race to um, Sunday's race that has caused this huge degradation in the in the tires and the performance of the Red Bull? Um, like, what's your thoughts, Isidro? And, and and how well did Max? Uh, regard you know based off that kind of issue that he was facing how well did he still manage to drive that car to finish p2 i think the the sprint race didn't didn't wasn't a a good picture of the race today uh, especially because there was no pressure of ferrari uh on saturday because ferrari was too busy fighting with each other mm. so max was just focused on his driving but this weekend uh this Sunday it was different because Leclerc was definitely putting some pressure on it, and and despite the pressure and the tires, I think Max did well. It was not an excellent drive; it was just good enough to handle the pressure of trying to fight Charles for the P1, but also keeping the tires uh, until the end of race, yeah. and also give some points to Red Bull. Because I think Paris was out. Exactly, he held held in there for the opportunity when 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 something happened ahead of them. They were there to capitalize on that on that P two. So yeah, look, they they got the points and it keeps them. Um, you know, it stops Ferrari closing that gap too much further. Um, but from obviously from from a bit of uh, bad fortunes for Red Bull not getting the win. Obviously, there was more bad fortunes than with Perez. Um, had the obviously had the issue with. With the qualifying, then starting from uh, P13 on the sprint, managed to have a good recovery drive, and then gets in a tangle with George Russell, um, which ultimately then leads to his retirement. Um, the you know his his pit crew did the best they could in terms of patching up with some light repairs and change of tires, but obviously they retired the car then on safety grounds. But what do we make of the collision? I mean, this is, uh, and we'll talk a bit more about George Russell because this will be now the third incident in over two weekends that George Russell has been involved in. He was obviously involved with Pierre Gasly and Joe that, at, at uh, the start of Silverstone. He was also involved in an incident, um, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't he involved in an incident then in the, um, in the with uh, Gasly in the sprint race? Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, and then also um, now with Perez here on on this race. Uh, so, uh, what did we make of the the the, the, the incident between these two, Isidro? Um, and you know, did did the penalty that George Russell get sort of justify the um, or or sorry offset the 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 damage that was caused? Uh, I think the the penalty is fair. It it was not a dirty move. It was just uh, a bit of a pushover, but I think the five seconds is enough punishment for Russell. Yeah, it's I... sad that Paris had to abandon, but I think the five seconds is enough of what happened there. Do you think? I, I have to say now, I, I, I suppose because it was the opening of the race, um, it's it's sort of the, the, the stewards are always a bit more lenient. Although having said that, well, they, they, they weren't fairly, they weren't letting anything go this weekend. But usually on an opening of a race, they're fairly lenient when it comes to collisions and stuff. And a lot of stuff gets brushed off as a racing incident. That So, so that's probably why maybe they were a little softer. But had that been later on in the race, um, like say that was towards the back end of the race, um, certainly five second penalty, I don't think would have cut it when you've just taken someone out, out, you know, someone who was fighting for possibly a P4, P3, something along along those lines, and you've taken them out of the race. So, um, but... Yeah, look, more missed points from from Red Bull. That's you know music. Well, it would have been music to the ears of Ferrari only for um, you know their engine decided to go nuclear. Um, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so I mean, look, they had the the, the, the two top teams. You know, one and two. Um, not much ga- ground gained um, from anyone. Let's uh, let's move on to Mercedes. I mean, the, the probably the most reliable team in the uh, in F one at the moment, um, bar their incidents on um, in qualifying there on Friday. But uh, what did we make of uh, the drive from George Russell? He had the incident there with Sergio Perez at the start of the race, and uh, 
like, what did we think? He after that incident, he got the five second penalty. He came in, he served that five second penalty in the pit lane. Uh, came out at the back of the grid. I think he actually came out just ahead of um, Sergio Perez. But he that what do you think of the recovery drive though? So he's coming from the back of the grid and then ended up finishing P four. Yeah, I, phenomenal. I mean, if it was Sergio, Sergio Perez that did that drive, would be all over it. Um, but I think to the fact that it's um, it's Russell, it goes a little bit unnoticed, maybe because he's just so consistently in the top five like that. You just expect to see him there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely outstanding drive. Um, as you said, the the, the move on uh, Perez wasn't too fond of that little maneuver, but um, yeah, con- consistently fantastic this season. Um, and what did you think of the penalty given to um, to to Russell? Did you think the five seconds was uh, too lenient? Um, I mean, are we, are we going against the grain here? Are we going <laughs> against the Azidro's uh, options? Uh, yeah, no, I I think it's consistent with how people have been penalised um, in the exact same instance. I mean, there was another, the exact same instance again later on in the race. Who was it? Uh, Vettel got taken out by, remind Sonoda me again. Sonoda or something, was it? Sonoda. Um, no, 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 that was Alonso and Sonoda. They had a little incident. I'm not sure who took Vettel out, but mm-hmm. there was um, a similar time penalty given, I think maybe Gasly. And then again, Albon and Hamilton a few seasons back exact same thing and and similar penalty as well so it's it's consistent it's not necessarily fair but it it is what it is it is what it is yeah no exactly great recovery drive again he keeps uh okay he had uh he, he's missed uh he's missed one opportunity for finishing above in the top five but i mean he's uh he's fairly consistently in the top five uh this season um and and uh doing well in that uh, sort of fairly struggling mercedes but um, going from one to the, to the other, Lewis Hamilton back on the podium again, um, starting to make a habit of this now. Um, again, that Mercedes showing its reliability, showing that they're, they may not have the best car, but because they have the most reliable car, when things start falling apart around them, they're there to capitalize due to still being on the track. Um, so... <laughs> Fair play to Mercedes for keeping a car going to the end of the race. Um, <laughs> but we're halfway through the season now. So what are we making of Mercedes' progress um, I, I, like to where they are? I mean, we saw them on Friday um, and in qualifying. And, I mean, they had pace. Like, they they were up there. They, they looked like they could have even been on the front row of the grid on Friday's qualifying. Uh, they were flying. Then, obviously, they wiped out both cars. Um, Hamilton's more severely and had to be rebuilt. Um, but then come into the race. I mean, let's skip over the sprint race for a second, just because the 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 the, the issue is more glaring in the in the main race. He, Hamilton still finished forty one seconds off the lead from a car that on Monday or sorry on on Friday was um, looking like it was going to be challenging up the top, um, and even with a rebuild. Um, they were down 41 seconds behind uh, behind the lead. So, like I'll start with Zidro. I'll, I'll ask both of you, but I'll start with Zidro. Um, what do you think of Mercedes' progress from where we, where they were at the start of the season to where they've got now midway through the season? And what is your in in a short? Now, let's not, let's not go too far on it, but in a in a in a short answer, where do you see them going now for the second half of the season? I think Mercedes is definitely learning a few things and they might not have the best car or the fastest car, but like I say, it's a reliable car. So they are definitely doing their thing, but expecting Red Bull or Ferrari to mess up and they are there to take the position. Mm. But uh, race after race, they are definitely picking up the pace and they know what they're doing. The car may not be fast, but it's always there to finish George Russell is that is the the best driver for them at the moment. Finishing every single race, he's always there. He's like the that little leak in the house. You don't notice, but suddenly the house is gone. <laughs> <laughs> point by point, that man is always there finishing the races. Yeah, <laughs> like a little leak. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it goes unnoticed, but uh, he's there making, uh, getting four, five, six, uh, 
they're getting the points. Mercedes is getting the points. Now Hamilton is getting podium for the past uh, three races. So where so, do you think after the summer break then, where do you see them um, again? Like I said, let's, we won't go, we won't go diving too much into what we think uh, they may or may not do, but just your own feeling of how they progressed to this date. When we come back from the summer break, which would be the start of August, um, how well do you think they're going to be? Are they going to be competitive? Would you feel they're going to be competitive at that stage, given the progress uh, they've made to date? Yeah, they will definitely be not fighting with Red Bull, but they will, they will definitely be putting pressure on Ferrari. Mm-hmm. I see that happening. And Scotty, what are you? Are, are are you in agreement? Or I know I know you're you're a you hate on Mercedes. Anytime we think there's the hype trains rolling through and we're all jumping on <laughs> Mercedes all the way, you are right there to cool everyone's jets. So, uh, Mr. Buzzkill, over to you. What do you think Mercedes are going to do for the second half of the season? No, I, I actually think the tide has turned and I don't think today... Ah, was... You can't jump on now. No, no, no. no, no. Jump... <laughs> the door has closed. Let me, on, let me on, let me on, let me on. No, um, I, I think the tide has, has turned or is turning for Mercedes and I don't think today's race was really reflective of the pace that's actually there um hamilton we don't forget that he had to fight his way through i think he had mick schumacher Ocon, um maybe alonso as well he had to fight his way to that uh to that p3 so he had a lot more going on to get to there i think that's that's why there's such a gap there but there's the, the 41 seconds um and I think that the pace that they had on the Saturday is a lot more reflective of, of the actual pace of the car. So I think, I think they're a lot closer now than they've they've uh, they've been in in recent weeks for sure. Yeah, no, I I definitely think they're going to be more competitive. So and and so so as you said, they're going to be more competitive. So after the summer break, do you when you say that you think they're going to be more competitive? Would you see them? Um, would you see see them just? more competitive in the sense that they're just going to be regularly challenged for the podium or do you see them maybe pushing further up maybe even getting a, uh, would, would there be a race win in it for them before the end of the season yeah for sure i think without a, without a four there. dnfs in front of them <laughs> <laughs> no as you said c- consistency is their key i don't see dnfs in in their future really to be honest but i i see as isidro says i see them pushing uh pushing ferrari for sure yeah a little bit more consistently well from uh, one that one hype train to the next <laughs> driver of the day Mick Schumacher P6 um I'll be honest like I love K Mag but I'm delighted because I think K Mag <laughs> absolutely screwed him up for, on, on Saturday in in the sprint yeah. race um so I'm delighted Mick got P6 great to see a big haul of points from him big haul of points from uh from Haas all around um but Driver of the day, uh, I, I think this deserves an answer from both yous because uh, it's Mick Schumacher. Team Mick here needs uh, needs some love. Isidro, <laughs> what did you make of his drive today? Uh, it was it was great. It was a great drive. It's definitely I don't know what happened between the in the, in the last weekend Silverstone and now, but he definitely found uh, his way, and I'm I'm sure the car. Has team also did uh, something good there. Well, yeah. you say that. Sorry to cut across you, Zedro, but they, they actually have, they're, I think, the only team on the grid not to have brought any upgrades yet. <laughs> they're, they're, they're stating that the improvements in their cars purely set up changes and adjusting what they've already got on the car. And they yet, they still yet have to bring all their major upgrades. So, no. um, so there you go. I just, I just thought I'd, I'd throw that in there. And, as well as that, what you were saying there about the, um, you know, what happened with Mick Schumacher. I mean, it was a guy that said, you know, after his accidents, um, and Gunter Steiner kind of sort of get issued his sort of first warning, um, and Mick Schumacher, I think, came out with a response or sort of saying, "I do well under pressure." Um, I mean, since he came out and said he does well under pressure, I mean, I know he's had some unfortunate, um, bad luck, but he's been, I mean, he stepped up. The pre- he, he hasn't, uh, you know, he, he made his statements and he's backed it up with the performances on the track. What do you think, Scotty? Yeah, listen, I know oh, I just... Oh, don't, I can see the tone <laughs> of your voice already. Right. Don't, don't <laughs> no, no, his. no. I know I just jumped on the Mercedes hype train, but ah. I can see the Mick Schumacher oh. hype train pulling up alongside and I'm going to jump across onto that as <laughs> well, right, if that's right. okay. <laughs> um, I th- there, there was a definite, you could see 
the way he was driving. He took the confidence from last week into this week. Um, he seems not like a different driver, but he seems to be driving with uh, with confidence. And two weeks in a row, that's that's no fluke. Um, he did fantastic today. Great, great drive. And yeah, I I, I really think they're going to do good things this season. Um, and he, uh, and I mean, the way he was holding up Lewis Hamilton, well, not holding him up, that's, that's actually a terrible way of wording. The way he was defending against Lewis Hamilton, I think, um, was phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, fantastic drive. And uh, I mean, where do we see it go from here for Mick? Yeah, like if, if, he, if, he, if it only keeps going up, I know that we're at very early stages and some positive results for him. Mm. But do we see perhaps if the results keep coming in, he he's keeps performing, could there be a, an alpha drive in there for him or, um, you know, will he move? Although, would you want an alpha drive? I mean, the Haas team is is outperforming alpha at the moment. So um, maybe it's uh, stick there for another year um, and uh, earn your stripes, maybe. Possibly a McLaren seat could be coming up. Well, not for him. He's a Ferrari driver. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that know, will I know. never happen. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I, I, you wouldn't want, I don't think you'd want to go from, from Haas to alpha at the moment. No. The, the only thing, you know, the only next logical step for Mick Schumacher is, am I going to say it? Maybe Ferrari? It Too really soon, would, maybe. But isn't it? Well, look, I think we all know that's where he, that's what he's being groomed for. Like, And again, it's just purely from the fer- Ferrari, sort of the romantic side of um, who Ferrari, Scuderia Ferrari are. Um, they want Mick Schumacher there. But I mean, at the end of the day, if he does, if he's not going to cut it, there's no point in just sitting him in that car for the sake of it. Um, yeah. But he's shown promise, like I said. The fact, though, that he does perform well under pressure. I mean, there's a pl- there's plenty of drivers that we could mention in the grid at the moment when the pressure is put on, um, they don't perform well. Um, and before I even finish that sentence, I'm going to bleed that <laughs> straight into McLaren. <laughs> um now, a great result, double double points finish for them. Um, well, when I say a great result, I mean, I'm sure they expect more from their team. Hmm. But Daniel Ricciardo, and again, we're, we're, we, we, we batter him every week. But I, 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 unfortunately, I have to make mention of it because hmm. Norris was in an old engine that they reckon was the guts of three tenths down on power. And Daniel Ricciardo in a newer engine still couldn't outperform his teammate like has it like has he just checked out or something like because it just it's not working for him and this is and this is why i I segued very poorly (laughs) into (laughs) into mclaren um because when we talk about drivers performing under pressure i mean mick was clearly i mean mick was clearly you're gone at the end of the season. You've cost the team so much money. If this continues, you're gone. That mm. is proper pressure, and he's stepping up. Mm. Daniel Ricciardo doesn't have necessarily that much pressure because he is contracted for next year, but he does have pressure in the sense that his performances aren't stacking up, and he's still not able to get a performance out of the car. A P9 today, you may say, great, he got a points finish. But he still didn't outperform his like he should have finished ahead of Norris in an underperforming with an underperforming engine. Um, I, I know, sorry, I've I've gone on about this a bit too long, but I mean, I, just quick answer from both of you. I'll start with you, Scotty. Like, what? Like, should he have done better today? Yep. He he should have done better already this season. Can I just bring something up here, Danny Ricardo? I'll bring you through his races up to this point last season. He Bahrain. He uh, finished seventh. He got sixth in uh, in Italy. I won't go Sorry, to this. Is the twenty twenty one season? Your twenty twenty one season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, ten point six points, eight points, two points, eight points, two points, eight point six points. He consistently cl- scored points up until this point last season yeah. on all the same tracks. He is a shadow of his former self. There's yeah. something seriously wrong there, and um, he needs to figure it out. McLaren or, or McLaren need to figure it out and uh, come up with the <laughs> and solution. And if McLaren figure it out, I think we know <laughs> what the answer is going to be. <laughs> He's forcing their hand. He's forcing he their hand. And what do you think? Uh, do you agree with that, Azidro? Yeah, I agree. Uh, just because he has a contract next year, McLaren just may change their mind mm-hmm. and say, well, we get the new one and let Ricardo the goal. He's a good driver, but he's not showing that this season, at least not so far. Yeah. Uh, B9 and a B8 every now and then, it's not enough to justify him. 
in that as, way. As the divorce lawyer says, sorry, Isidro, to cut across you there, the contracts are made to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> So well, that that that's it. I mean, it's true. Like uh, he needs to, he needs to step up their game. And I mean, and we'll just wrap up then with um, a team that also have a driver that needs to step up their game. Um, Williams, um, Albon near. I mean, not Albon needs to step up the game, but Albon <laughs> almost got could have got P ten today. I mean, the car just didn't have what it needed to 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 hold on to that P ten. Um, but he got P twelve. I think that's a great finish. Um, I mean, he's finished. He, they've finished ahead of teams that you would arguably say are better than them. Um, that's the upgraded Williams, the new side pods, new floor, the, the whole new package. Um, Latifi now obviously has the same package as Albon. Um, now it is his first time out in that car. But as we made a mention, or I made a mention to you, Scotty, uh, before we started recording, I'm going to be honest and say I didn't even know Latifi was in this race. <laughs> like I didn't hear anything from him nothing and even when Sergio Perez was at the back of the grid I didn't even see or you know at the back of the the pack after his uh after his accident I still didn't see Latifi and I didn't know he was out until it came up on the driver standings that, that yeah. Latifi was out <laughs> um so is this I mean this this has to be locked in now he's he's got to be gone at the end of this season um and if he is gone are we looking at someone like Jack Aiken or someone like that who's obviously getting his FP1 drive um, what are we thinking, uh, Scotty? I start with you. What are you thinking? Is is, uh, is he gone? Oh, he's gone. I think he got a text alert or something to say there was an early bird menu <laughs> in, the, in the hotel for the next uh, <laughs> Grand Prix. He was like, right, I'm gone. Out. Um, I don't even know what happened to him. What, how how did he finish the race? Did he just pull in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he popped out of the car. Went through the drive through and then stalled it. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I honestly don't know what happened to him. I just saw, as you said, I just saw that he was out. Um, Not a clue. Like I said, when the lads were at the back, when Russell and Perez and that were at the back, I still didn't even see. I didn't even know he was there. <laughs> it completely went under the radar. He might as uh, well not be there. Yeah, no, he needs to. He needs to step aside and just head off. And there. I'm not saying he's not a good race driver. Uh, I'm just saying he's not suited for F1. I think maybe he should look into. Uh, <laughs> I can see what you were waiting <laughs> to say. <It's> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's suited to like a sort of um, a different a different series, like um, some sort of like Le Mans or uh, Collecting in the cars. Bins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bin lorry driver. Uh, maybe you can drive the JCB yeah. and they have to go and pick up. <laughs> Let him drive the safety car. He's fond of that. <laughs> Jesus, would you trust him? Um, but um, all right, well, should look. Let, let, let's move. Let's not, let's not, let's not batter the goat too much. <laughs> Sorry, before you do, can I just get a, a, a quick uh, nod to Fernando Alonso and the finger wag at Yuki? Did you see it? Oh, I actually I only saw it in the replay. I didn't see it in in real time during the race. Phenomenal, phenomenal, <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. Well, look that that was that was Austria. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, now we have to look forward to our predictions and France. Oh. <laughs> so, right, where are we? All right, everyone, cool jets. Right, <laughs> everyone, calm, <laughs> calm down. Let's have a look. Right, I'm leading the pack on five points. Of course, you are. Owen, of course I am. <laughs> Owen, <laughs> Owen is uh, on four points, and Isidro is on one point. So that's that's the standings at the moment. Mm. So let's have a look at an an absolute disaster. disaster. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, it's sometimes hard for me not to curse. It really is. <laughs> oh god! All right, I'll call out my top three, and I'll just rattle through them. Verstappen, Leclerc, signs. <laughs> I didn't get any in the right position. <laughs> Nothing. Scotty. Um, yeah, my top three, Verstappen, Sainz, Perez. Wah, wah, wah. Nothing. And Isidro. <laughs> Verstappen, Perez, Sainz. Oh. <laughs> wah, wah. So oh. we all got big goose eggs on all that. <laughs> zero, zero, <Yeah>. zero. <laughs> so, but oh, God, let's take a go. moment of praise. <laughs> here we go. Everyone polish up the throne for me. <laughs> 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 Let me get my soapbox out here. <laughs> My flop was Sergio Perez with a DNF. <laughs> good call. Yeah, good call. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> All right, who did, we, who did we go with, uh, Scotty? Now, I came so close to this. I had a <laughs> Russell DNF. And when I saw Russell take out Perez, I was like, oh, we're going we're to have points. But uh, <laughs> Russell DNF didn't quite come off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can work. imagine you were getting excited there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Isidro, who did you go with? I got Norris DNF. Didn't happen. Ooh. Ouchie. Jesus. So we're now on to the surprises. And I had Albon, top 10. I came close. Yeah. It was the last, what, eight laps or something like that. He ended up dropping out. But I yeah. came close. Uh, who did you go with, Scotty, for your surprise? I had Norris P4. Ugh, he did all right. Where did he come? P7, was it? P8? Yeah. P7? And then he, he had a five second penalty um, for track limits, which pretty much everyone had today. Even I got one. I think even watching the race, I got a, a five <laughs> second limit. penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, who but, did you go with, uh, Isidro, for your surprise? I got Schumacher on top 10. Yeah, yeah, that was a good, a good call. That was well a done. good call. And uh, But I should draw mention to a little side note that we made where Isidro thought that Leclerc was going to come P7. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, now, I forget what we did the last time when we had a tie. because we So we've got a tie now between myself and Isidro. Did we both just take a point the last on yeah. the last tie break? Point or did each, we, yeah. Or did we have a tie break? No, it was only when we had a tie break on the certain section. So it was a, both of our surprise was. Uh, oh yeah, same, whoever was closest to position. Okay, yeah. so so okay, so this week we both take a point each. Then yeah, um, that's it. so that all around puts me on six points. And oh, I'm well mid table now. Oh, a zero or uh, Scotty, you stay there on four, four and a zero, climbing the ladder. Looking At the bottom, <laughs> <laughs> on two I'm, points. I'm secure mid table. I'm Champions League spot anyway. <laughs> uh, you are at the moment. Well, you're, you're, yeah, you're fighting. You're fighting for Europa League with a zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So let's let's look let's look forward to France. Uh, I'll give my my top three. So uh, are you uh, taking control of the spreadsheet there, uh, Scotty? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Go on. All right. Uh, I'll go with Leclerc taking the win. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good shot. Uh, Verstappen taking second. Uh-huh. And I'm going to go, I'm going to regret this. For some reason, I just have in the back of my mind, I'm going to regret this. But I'm going with Perez P3. Cool. Did... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Fucking you didn't say Latifi P3. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. And you didn't um... put Leclerc in my... <laughs> Uh, here, I'll take over this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you do my ones. Okay, you my get your uh, hands off. <laughs> my predictions for top three are uh, Verstappen, number one. Now, wait till you see this. Talk oh. about getting on a hype train. Oh God, Hamilton P two. Ah, here. All right, Russell P three. Wow, so you are hoping for some DNFs. I'm driving that that hype train. <laughs> you, right... you really are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. All right, Zedro, are you are you uh bring us back to reality yeah. here? So first <laughs> Max Verstappen, second Charles you, Leclerc. Third, I thought you were gonna have a Schumacher and send us all into the stratosphere. <laughs> uh sorry, Zedro, I spoke over you. Second you had uh, Leclerc. Leclerc and, and second third, Hamilton. We're going with another podium for Hamilton. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So on to the flops first. Flop. Um, I am going with Ricardo with a DNF. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't he hasn't had a DNF in ages. So that's yeah, why I fair. thought I did I shouldn't have yeah. to I didn't know yeah, I fair. had to justify like what sort of DNF he had. Yeah, that's fair. Um, um okay. I'm, yeah, this doesn't even make sense to me now that I'm looking at it. Um, it made more sense earlier and then I changed my mind. So I'm going to say be... um, my flap is Perez. Yeah, okay. Well, what's And I'm the... going to say P15 finish. What the f- what? Yeah, oh. I'm not going to even say DNF. <laughs> Watch your language. If you if you had gone with a DNF, we'd all have been like, fair enough. I know, I'm going to say or... D5, or D15, P15. Even outside, if you'd just gone Perez outside top 10, you've been like, oh, yeah, you might have a bad, you know, might have a bad, but you've no, P15, nail it. P15, you're nailing it. Yeah, all I'm going right. big air. Okay. Um. All right, uh, Isidro, who have you got as your, your flop? My flop is Sainz, DNF. Uh, I think Ferrari's not there yet. Yeah, yeah but yeah. now, you do realize Sainz is going to have effectively a brand new car. Like well, that. but it's Ferrari that is building that car. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I mean, yeah, it, it may as well be a, this weekend. Yeah, 
that would be fair. outstanding if the car blew up after just building oh, it. Oh, wow. All right. Okay, I'm signs DNF. This. Yeah, some, there's some big calls going on here. Well, apart mm. from me, I guess. Um, <laughs> surprise then. Uh, I'm going to go Albon again. Top Ooh. 10. I think yeah. he, he should have had it. I just think he didn't have the straight line speed to hold them off. And um, France GP is more about fast cornering and stuff like that. So I have a feeling he might just be there or thereabouts in the P10. So yeah. I'm going to go P10 again. That's a good uh, shot. Or top 10, sorry, not P10. Uh, right, who'd you go with? Who's your surprise? My surprise is... Shock me. Is this a surprise? Pierre Gasly, top 10 finish. That was very underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gasly, top 10. I mean... Uh, he hasn't been in the top 10 consistently at all, right, all just, this season. Just, just justify it to us then. Go on. What, what's the sales pitch? <laughs> That's it. Uh, <laughs> that's it, pretty much. Yeah, no, he's been consistently very average. Um, I think he's been outside the top ten more often than not. I'll be season. honest. I I know. Look, I, I don't I'll see it Az happening. I'll but... let Azidro be the decider. I feel that that's very plausible for Gasly to be in the top ten in Do you France. Think... Song yeah. Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah that's what swayed me towards it. Yeah, that, you've 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 uh, gone easy with the top 10 i think <laughs> i think now zero if you want to back me up here i'll go with your decision i think he should call a position on this one yeah definitely oh, position. that is yeah. harsh otherwise it's uh it's guarantee almost yeah I, I think so yeah Oof. okay okay um the majority has spoken fine <laughs> fine i hate democracy yeah um <laughs> all right i'm gonna say gasly p8 Again, it's safe, but yeah, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's let's let's, uh, let's not beat that one to death. Um, harsh, that's harsh, harsh. <laughs> all right, Zidro, who's the surprise? Uh, Schumacher top ten. Ah, fuck. The ah, get out of here. Get out of town. Go home. <laughs> okay, let's say uh, Norris P seven. Mm. Is that a surprise? I think he's mm. playing it safe. I think he's. That's very safe, I think. It's, now, the only, I think the only way we can let it in is he's calling a position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fairly accurate. Yeah, you have to be. You, you know. have to be. You have to nail it. So, um, P7. Yeah. Now, actually, I'll give him Schumacher, but he has to call a position, I think, on Schumacher as well. Yeah. I, he's I think double... Schumacher's more plausible at the moment than And Norris. he's had two P he's had two top 10 finishes in the last two races. Yeah. So, I think if you're going to use Schumacher, you need, a, you need a position. So, which is it? Norris? With a position or Schumacher with a position? Norris. I'll keep Norris. Oh, <laughs> I'd have gone with Schumacher. <laughs> yes, me too. Yeah. <laughs> totally. We were letting you off the hook there. Um, all so, right. That's uh, Norris P7. Interesting. Perfect. All right. Well, we look forward to, to see what happens and what un unravels in France, or will it be a load of goose eggs all around like it was for us in Austria? Um, but that's it for this week's episode, folks. We're uh, I think we're away next week now. We're all getting our uh, nails and hair done. So we shall join you again for the France Grand Prix. Um, as always, though, please uh, you know like and comment and share anywhere you see us on social media get sharing the podcast with your friends and family uh, get the word out there people but always as well send on any comments and stuff like that on social media and at feedback at late night race until next week though 